What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Cerrone. I hope everybody's having a good day today so far. Um, I hope you're enjoying your quarantine as much as possible, staying both physically and mentally healthy to the furthest extent possible. And I'm going to continue the uh, COVID-19 quarantine reading. I'm going to start in uh, Legal Life 2, Carl's Revenge today on uh, chapter 18, page 108. I don't know, Meech. I don't feel right taking your money. I'm paying you for a service, Meech interrupted. Consider it overtime. Are you really going to turn down a stack to eat a meal and watch TV for a few hours? I guess not, Cece confessed, her head held low. The young woman felt so guilty that she could barely control her emotions. However, she had already agreed to help Carl and she had been around the streets long enough to know not to allow her emotions to interfere with the completion of this mission. So what do you want to watch? I have Martin on DVD if you want to watch that. Is that cool with you? Yeah, Martin is my shit, Cece enthusiastically agreed as she located the box set and placed one of the DVDs in the video game console. I need to watch something funny anyway. You and me both, Meech grinned as he removed his keys from around his neck and handed them to Cece. Here, it's the little silver one. The safe is in the hallway closet. Just grab a stack and lock it back up for me. Are you sure? Cece hesitated as she took the keys from her client. That's a lot of money for a couple hours of company. I already told you, Ma. I'm trying to show you what type of time I'm on. Go get that so you can get back down here. The first episode is start. Per Demetrius' instructions, Cece scurried upstairs and located the safe inside the hallway closet. She used the key to unlock it, counted out $1,000, and placed it in a bra before locking the safe. The young woman returned to the living room and returned her client's keys to him. You got it? Yes, thank you so much. Cece forced a smile. The young CNA felt terrible for what she was doing in general and phony for her ability to smile in Meech's face and care for his health while simultaneously setting him up. You already know, Ma. Now let's watch this funny-ass nigga Mart. I need to use the bathroom really quick, though, Cece replied. Sorry, I just wanted to give you your keys back first. Oh, you good, Ma, Meech grinned. I appreciate it, but it's not that deep. I'm not worried about you robbing me. Will you bring me another beer when you come back? Sure. Cece hurriedly made her way up the steps once more, her purse in hand, rushed into the bathroom and closed the door behind her. She retrieved her burner phone from her purse and dialed Carl. Yo, ma, Carl quickly answered. I'm about to be there in like a half. Yeah, baby, I know, Cece quickly responded. I need to tell you something. Everything good? Yeah, um, Cece hesitated. Do you really love me, Carl? What? Come on, ma. You already know how I feel about you, Cece. Carl huffed lackadaisically. What's going on? We ain't really got time for all the soft shit right now. You realize what's about to go down when I get there, right? Yeah, and that's why I'm asking you if you really love me, Cece retorted. I'm risking a lot helping you with this, baby. I already know and I told you I would pay you, Carl sighed. Why are you tripping? The nigga has a safe with at least 50 racks in it, baby, Cece whispered fiercely. Real shit? Are you sure? Carl's voice cracked with excitement. Yes, baby, I'm sure, Cece confirmed. I already saw it. He has the keys on him. He already trusts me. That's what's up, dumbass nigga, Carl chuckled. No offense, but he's a street nigga. He should know better. That's why he's about to get done extra dirty. Good looking out, baby. No problem, Carl, Cece sighed, but you still didn't answer my question. Do you really love me? You already know I love you, Cece. Now get back to that nigga before he gets suspicious. I'll see you soon. Okay, baby. Cece disconnected the call, flushed the toilet, ran the sink water for a moment as she regained her composure and returned downstairs. She walked into the kitchen, retrieved the beer for Demetrius and brought it into the living room for him. You good, Cece? Demetrius asked when he noticed the attractive young woman's vexed facial expression. Yeah, just tired, Cece lied. It's been a long day. Well, just relax and let Martin's goofy ass help you laugh all your stress away, Meech chuckled as he opened his beer and took a sip. Oh, yeah, Cece abruptly spoke up. You need to take your pain meds before I leave. I sure do, Meech agreed. My shit is whamming right now. Yeah, that's another reason why you're not supposed to drink, Cece jeered. Alcohol and pain meds don't mix, but you're grown, so I know you're not trying to hear that. The young woman retrieved the man's pain, prescription pain medications and sorted them out before administering them in proper dosages. 
She then sat back down on the sofa and watched television with him as she anxiously awaited Carl's arrival. Within 15 minutes, Demetrius had finished his beer and dozed off as he sat upright in his wheelchair. Ten minutes later, there was a light tapping on the front door. Cece slowly rose from the sofa so as not to disturb Demetrius, who was seated in his wheelchair close to her. She quickly scurried to the front door and unlocked it. Cece let out a sigh of relief when she saw her man. She pecked him on his lips and embraced him. Let's hurry up and get this shit over with, love, Cece whispered. Say less. Carl agreed as he strolled through the foyer into the living room and glared at the surviving Jamaican man who had previously robbed and assaulted him. You got the needle and shit? Here you go, love, Cece sheepishly replied with tears in her eyes. She retrieved the syringe and bottle of morphine from her purse and carefully filled the syringe with the potent liquid, prescription painkiller before handing it to Carl. Carl ignored his partner's fragile demeanor and bent over the man sleeping in his wheelchair. He held the syringe in one hand as he raised his other hand high in the air. He swiftly brought the same hand down across the Jamaican man's face, striking him with an open hand as hard as he possibly could. Smack! Wake up, pussy! Carl growled as the man's head snapped back upon the impact of the brutal slap. Carl immediately grabbed Demetrius' forehead with his free hand and restrained the man as he forcefully injected his Jamaican rival in the neck with a syringe full of morphine. He quickly emptied the contents of the needle into his enemy's bloodstream before Meech had a chance to react. Damn, what the fuck? Meech gargled as Carl stepped back and looked down at his battered enemy. Who the fuck? What the? Meech's speech slurred and his vision became blurry as the synergy of the prescription drugs, the beers and a lethal dose of morphine combined in his bloodstream and began to overwhelm his system. Oh, fuck. Yeah, pussies, Carl scoffed. I told y'all pussies you was fucking with the wrong one when you ran up in my crib. Now look at you. So, I'm gonna stop right there. That's an excerpt from Illegal Life 2, Carl's Revenge. To find out what happened, you can visit the link in the bio. Paperchasepublications.com is the official website of Paper Chase Publications, LLC, my company. Um, I have other books, too. Uh, of course, the first title that I released, Illegal Life, a North Philly Story, this is Reloaded, uh, released a couple weeks, uh, a couple weeks, a couple years ago. Uh, there's actually a, a combo package I uh, need to promote that. Uh, you can get both books, Illegal Life and Illegal Life 2 Calls Revenge. So they're typically $20 a piece. All the books are $20 a piece. Um, but if you want to order both of these books, if you haven't read the first one yet, you can get them both for $35 plus shipping and handling. So if you go on the website, of course, like any other website, you type in your address as you're ordering. And once you enter your address, it'll calculate the shipping for anywhere in the world. Um, so both books, $35. And then the rest of the books are $20 a piece. You have uh, Suicide Tuesday, Prodigal Son Book One. Sequels are being worked on right now, so they'll be out this year. And, of course, the joint project by myself and uh, Jermaine Cruz, a.k.a. Sam Rothstein of Fiesta Bowl Entertainment. Hood Politics. Crime novel released March of 2019. But if you haven't read it, it's new to you. This joint is hot. So, appreciate y'all time. Thanks for checking me out. Thanks for bearing with me. And I hope y'all enjoyed. So, thanks to everybody who supported so far who's listened, liked, reposted, shared, and all of that, commented. Appreciate y'all. So make sure you stay happy, healthy as possible, both physically and mentally. Stay corona-free, free free of any other illnesses, if possible, both physical and mental. And um, remember, reading is gangster. Have a good day, y'all.